What's up everyone? My name is Nax. Welcome back to another tutorial on the channel. Today is the second part in the van life tutorial series. Now in the first part, I did say that I'm going to do three parts. The first part just being the framing and the outside of the van. The second part being a homey looking van that has a very warm house like feel inside sort of the way my van is here. And then the third part, I was going to try to do a fully functional workshop tinkerers kind of van that um, is uh, a fully functional camp. And when I started doing these second tutorials, I realized how insanely long it's actually going to take me and how technical everything is so I've decided just to do one van and even that's still going to be another two parts after this so um, it's kind of like a mix between the two half a homey van half a tinkery kind of van so yeah there's going to be two more half an hour episodes just showing you how to build the inside of the van with merging all the um, workstations and everything and then I'm just going to do a final little part which is just going to be a small trailer that looks like it's been sort of towed by the van and that's just going to have your armor your armor station so the armor workbench and the uh, power armor station and then just this dash box because other than that I did somehow manage to get everything into the van um, as it is now I think so yeah let's get into it I hope you enjoy okay so here's our van so far it looks pretty good the outside's all done the roofs ignore the different textures for now we're going to change it later and what we want to do first is we're just going to go to this wall and just replace it to the default wall that comes with the game so just the standard wooden wall same thing with this half wall to front and then remember we've double sided the walls so this outside wall as well so just go ahead and change this all to the default wooden wall and then we're just going to shoot underground because what we want to do here is just destroy everything that we've built at the front here so if you watch the first part of the tutorial you know we boosted this all up and then uh rested it on these spike traps well, okay. okay so let's just destroy all these spike traps um which is just going to destroy pretty much everything that's at the front of the van and we're just doing this so that when we build there's no intersection issues or slightly less intersection issues now we're going to grab the flamethrower just destroy these two walls um, that you just replaced and then the half wooden wall at the front here as well then we can go ahead and move this out and then what we're going to do is just replace this door because it's also a chunky boy so we just want to put something basic here i'm just going to use this red rocket door but any door that's sort of out the way will do now we're going to put the floor which is going to be the mats which are the base of our van and i like to use this mat which is the uh black mat it's like a metallic looking steel mat and this is part of a season so if you don't have this you'll have to use something else like another rug or something but i just like to use this mat because it's got sort of a metallic feel to it and there's nothing else really like that so we're just gonna line that up so that it's pretty much um, the length of a foundation or a roof uh, which is what we're working with there and then just um, just straighten out as best you can and then we're gonna merge it down except we can't because this mannequin and this game fucking hate me so I'm just gonna replace that and then merge it down it's not gonna be perfect but that little overlapping side there is no problem because we're just gonna put that on the left and we're gonna be placing machinery on that anyway so it's not going to matter now just line this up and what i mean by that is just get it as close to the left and as close to the front as possible and then just go ahead and make sure it's straight it looks pretty good and that's fine so now what we're going to do is we want this van to be fully functional guys a fully functioning camp within two foundations which is pretty much the two roofs that we're using there so we're going to put down a spike trap and then we're going to start with um, ammo here so we're going to go over to resources and we're just going to take this um, ammo machine and this ammo stash box and then we're going to put this ammo machine on the spike trap and just just sort of in the middle like that is fine just get it as straight as possible and yeah just just line that up and just so that you can still select the spike trap and then we're just going to merge it down so that it's pretty much flush with the spike trap um the same way we did in the first tutorial and remember you have to move the spike trap on the pressure plate it's not just going to work like a normal merge and once you get that pretty much level with the spike trap we're going to go back inside and now we just want to line this up so right on the left hand side here get it as close to the left as you can and as close to the front of the van as you can so i'm just going to make sure that's straight can't really go forward anymore so that's cool we're just going to put this down right there cool now we're going to go ahead and activate the spike trap so it destroys that ammo machine and then we're going to grab the ammo stash box and we're just going to line this up like this and pretty much just like that as close to the front as you can get it is good and then we're going to repair the spike board just see what it looks like that's not bad it sort of looks like the same sometimes you just get a shit merge like sometimes you think you're being cool and you merge two items and it just looks like shit 
and that's just part of the game but that looks all right so we're gonna leave that like that for now and we're gonna go back outside and now we're gonna start with the actual dash of the van itself so i'm gonna do the most basic one i can think of guys so i'm just gonna take this default stash box that's part of the game it's not atomic shop or anything and then put down a spike trap and we're gonna put this on same thing same process we've been going through we're gonna like just bring it pretty much to the front of the spike trap. Make sure the spike trap is on the right of the stash box and the drawers are facing the other way, like so. And then same thing, we're just gonna merge this down so that it's pretty much level with the spike trap. And then this should just fit right in there. But before we do that, we're just gonna put it on a mat because placing the spike traps can be a little bit finicky. So I'm just gonna use this default gray mat here because we have that spike tracks spark trap sticking out a little bit we can select it i'm just going to put it on the mat and then we can select the mat and once we're done with that we're just going to take this mat go inside here that should fit right in there quite nicely once again get it as close as you can to the front make sure oh, what the fuck okay it's uh just a little bit of an interruption here we just got to just ignore this uh, there we go. okay that's it's never it's never happened it's first fucking time okay so now you want to just make sure this is straight so you can have a look there but because we destroyed even at the front we can jump up onto this floating generator and just make sure that that's as straight as you can get it it's not perfectly straight there um so luckily we have the mat which is quite forgiving if you manage to select it and you can just readjust that mat and just make sure that this guy is nice and straight at the front there so this is going to be the base for our dash and once we're done with that that looks pretty good so we're just going to destroy it uh using the spike trap and then go back and now what we're going to do is we're going to use the uh terminals so now there's three different types of these um they were like they were like in some of the seasons and in the atomic shop so hopefully you have them um, otherwise you're gonna have to come up with something else but anyway go to the terminals and there's two small variants of these we're going to put down two of each so two of those guys and two of these guys and then we're going to put a steering wheel in and um, the first time i did this in my van i used the vacuum cleaner from the past season and then when i was decorating for christmas i realized that it looked like the uh, vacuum cleaner was so small that only a plushie could drive it which was true because i did place a plushie there so we're going to make a more um, human sized dash for this van so i'm just going to use this light as the steering wheel as it's one of the only round things uh, bad notions has done this many times on his amazing videos and we just want to line this up here on this uh terminal that looks like it has a speedometer get it as close as you can to your body so that looks pretty good um and now we're just going to merge it down and we're going to just merge it down until it looks like an actual steering column sticking out of there so that's pretty cool for a steering wheel we've got like a little speedometer next to it so that's pretty cool now let's take that in and we want to just line it up with the gray mat you'll see here like it's in line with the gray mat there we go and then we want to put it against the ammo machine and then sort of just judge one terminal's distance away to the right and then give it a bit more so just like that and that's pretty much where we want to place this then we're going to repair this just to see how it sits obviously it's clipping a little bit there so we need to bring it towards us a little bit more so we're just going to drag it towards us and then replace repair it again and that looks pretty good so it's not really clipping now that looks cool so let's just go ahead and destroy that uh, cabinet again and now we're going to snap these in so these are going to snap not on the right there but they'll snap on the left and the reason for this is because of that gray mat so it's it's sort of um, making the height and un uneven there above that gray mat so it's fine we're just going to move that terminal forward and then we're going to go grab another gray mat and we're just going to put that in here just so that we can snap all of these guys together um you're not going to see it at the end so it's fine and now we're just going to move this forward again back to the original position we sort of had it and um you can put that mat in before and by the way and we just want to test now so let's check uh that looks good the terminal is sort of sticking out the console the terminal the console and now what's going to happen is it's not going to snap in on the left there because it's magically somehow changed the distance so let's just move this over a little bit more there we go that looks good and now this terminal should snap in on the left here and snap in on the right because we've raised it slightly with a mat so we've got these two in now so we're just going to put the others in but before we do that we're going to do a glove compartment or as we would call it here in south africa a cubby hole 
and I've got this little nuclear winter stash box which works fine if you don't have it you could use something else maybe an ammo box I don't know you could you could maybe try put like a safe there except uh, that's just not gonna work at all and look like shit so don't try to do that so let's just go back here and take this nuclear winter stash box same thing as the light we're just gonna get it straight except i use a mouse so it's never straight and we're just gonna bring this towards us and you'll see now it's intersecting and that's because my body is too close to the object and i've been building for four years and i only figured this out the other day that sometimes you just have to step back a little bit to get an item to come closer to you because it's insect intersecting with your character so just remember that um like i said it took me four years to figure that out and now we're just going to merge this down until it is flush or just beneath the actual um console itself and now that's going to snap in there and now we want to snap our last one in except it's not going to work obviously because now you have a merged stash box in there so <clears throat> to fix this we're just going to take this out and then we're going to go back and grab this other console and we're just going to snap this in and then go back and find another console which will probably take 46 million years because the consoles are the one thing i can never fucking find it's like it's like pulling teeth but anyway i'm sure plenty of you guys out there who build have gone through the same shit so let's find the console we're going to snap it in there now we're going to take out the third one which has our glove compartment and we're going to just take this one except i didn't and then and now it's going to snap and that's because i don't know but anyway it works so there we go now we've got our dash looking pretty good we've got the steering wheel we've got the glove compartment and that looks fine um so now we need a seat uh like a chair a car chair so there's probably a few ways to do this i'm just going to do it the most basic way i can think of so i'm going to take this metal stash box and i'm just going to use the airplane seat because it kind of does look like a scrappy car seat kind of and just line this up as well as you can so that it's pretty much centered and um what we're going to do is we're just going to put that on there and then we're going to take this stash box and we're just going to merge it down until the seat is flush with the top of the stash box so that it looks like it's so that it looks like it's fixed to the van testing that it works there quickly that's all good so now it looks a little bit boring so we're just going to spice it up a bit we're going to put another stash box so this yellow nuclear winter one works quite well once again um you could try use something else uh if you're creative enough if you don't have this maybe this alien bench except that then is fucking huge so it's going to look terrible so just forget about that we're just going to use this yellow stash box and now we're just going to drag this on we're not going to center it perfectly we're going to have it slightly to the right because of the orientation of where our dash is and we're just going to have it slightly forward so that the texture of the yellow scrappy looking nuclear winter stash box merges with the metal stash box that we've merged our chair into and now we're going to take that and same thing just merge it down get it pretty much flush with the bottom there that looks good so let's go back into the van we're just going to line this up so that it's in line with our steering wheel there we go and just leave a little bit of a gap guys because we're going to do a half-assed attempt at putting some pedals in there to make it look like it actually has pedals uh but so just leave a little bit of a gap there like that that looks okay make sure it's straight that looks good test that it works always test that it works when you're building in really close confines like this and that's all good it works it looks pretty cool so we can build that and then burn the shit out of it so grab your flamethrower we need the roof what you want to do is pretty much burn all the consoles and your stash boxes with your chair and just leave the mat and the roof there like so so now we're going to put these pedals in and i'm just going to use these power connectors it's it looks all right it there might be something better that you can do but this looks okay so i'm just going to put these two down here and i'm just going to put them slightly off center so it looks like like a scrappyish kind of van build so we're going to put that one in there and then we're going to just move this one forward a little bit just so it's a little bit off center for the accelerator and the brake so clearly this van is automatic okay now we're going to just fix that mat so that we can see where our chair is and we're going to add some more basic sort of mechanics and piping around here just to make it look like it is a bit more mechanical than just some random item seen there so i'm just going to put down this conduit now this next one's not going to snap so just toggle your snapping to off and then place that manually 
um, it's not going to work here either so just once again a manual uh, like a manual placement with the with the toggling snap to off will snap through the stash box so that looks all right and now obviously i didn't destroy this last console so that's never going to work so after i try and place it fruitfully for a couple of minutes which i knew was not going to work in the beginning we're just going to grab the flamethrower and just get rid of that last pesky console so save yourself some time and just do this in the beginning and now that that's destroyed we can once again go ahead and it's not going to snap so it's toggle snapping to off and then we can place it manually now that looks all right like we've got one sort of pipe leading around there we're just going to add one more so we're just going to take this power connector here and we're just going to merge it a little bit into the stash box so it looks like it's connected try to get it as straight as possible and this one luckily is going to snap so we're just going to take this snap it there take another one snap it there and now you've got some cool mechanical looking piping that goes around the cockpit or the dashboard or the driving area of the van so yeah that looks all right for now and what we're going to do is there's this one last little gap here um that doesn't really fit anything so i'm just going to put this speaker in um just because it sort of looks like it could be part of a vehicle and when we replace the door it's gonna cover a lot of that area anyway but we're just gonna put that speaker in there and up here in my van i did raise the consoles up so i had consoles on top as well but that's going to take fifty-three thousand years if i try to do that now so i'm just going to take this patriotic american flag and just put this here to match the american flag on our ammo box cool and now we're going to shoot back underground because our camp machine is still sitting underground here from when we raised all that shut up in the first tutorial and i'm just going to repair everything and then have a look how it looks looks pretty good um just going to replace this wall back to the steel windows that it is supposed to be because remember we replaced that all with wood and once you've got the windows it looks pretty good it's i mean it, it you know let's just replace this door as well back to the enclave one uh i like to use this one it's got a lot of texture and it's quite bulky but you guys can use whatever door you want and then that looks pretty good except it doesn't because we can't see shit because we're looking straight at wood when we look through the windshield so let's go and replace this back to the glass and there we go that's pretty much it for the dashboard and the cockpit but we just want to add a few more bits and bobs so we're going to just put a radio there at the front and um I'm just gonna spend 30 years finding this balloon animal which is what we're gonna merge in there and we're just gonna put that down on top of a radio and then we're just gonna merge this guy down in a very cute little merge just so that we don't have his whole body there we are just gonna be left with his head and obviously I just did this I don't know why I did it you guys can obviously come up with whatever you want for your own radio so we're going to put the radio down here on the dash there's still a bit of space to decorate there you can mess around you can still hang things from the top whatever you want um we just need one little, more little decoration here so i'm just going to go with this clappy clapper whatever fuck this fucking pin is but there's the dash looks pretty good um legitimately looks like some you some dystopian sort of post-apocalyptic van the chair works that all looks good looks like we're actually driving it with the steering wheel i like it so yeah that's good for now and that is the dash all done okay now that we're done with that we're going to start with the interior here so what we're going to do is we're going to do a, like an upper frame that goes along the top like that made out of cabinets and bar counters and i tried just building at the bottom but without that top framing it just doesn't have that vehicle feel so we're going to put that in um I, let's, so let's just take a rug i like to use this really big one because it's pretty much the almost the perfect width of the roof that we're working with here between the double walling and we're just going to place that down like that and then we're going to go over uh, down to these um, bar counters and there's been a whole uh, a whole series of them released over the years in the atomic shop so hopefully you guys have some i'm going to use this wooden one just to get a bit of a like homey feel here and if you just snap them down like that without moving uh, they will snap on top of each other perfectly like that and now i see there's another little gap here actually and because we want this to be a fully functional van we're just going to put this fusion core charger in here you can put something else in there maybe a locker or something would look cool uh, you could always um, set up a generator outside and uh, charge 
charge some fusion cores by just uh, wiring it up through the window there. So we're just going to put that in there and then we're going to bring these bar counters back in and now we just want to line them up uh, behind behind the black mats on the floor here and just on the rug that we've just put down. So we're just going to get it as close to the back wall like that and as close to the fusion charge that we've just put down. It doesn't have to be exactly straight for now because we are going to move it again. So just get it pretty much roughly as close as you can for now. Now, once that's in, we're going to start with the cabinetry that we're going to be raising up. So I'm going to just use this table here. Um, it's a standard table, not atomic shop or anything. And just same thing, want to get it as close to the bar counters as you can and as far back against the wall as you can and as relatively straight as you can. So I'm going to start off and just place this double one down like this. And then we're just going to use a single one because uh, two double ones would be a little bit too long for what we're trying to do here. So just going to place a down another single one just like this and once we've got all that together we're going to move these triple bar counters that are stacked up out again we're going to use them again later I'm just going to move this mannequin here so it doesn't screw me over again and then i've brought the camp machine back up from underground you can just select the underground and jump back up through the ground so let's go ahead and grab this rug and now we're going to put it on the camp machine except we can't because i placed this like an idiot so let's just move this here and then place the rug on the camp machine and we're going to go ahead and boost these um, cabinets into the air and now once again there's no set way for knowing exactly how high this has to be uh, but before we boost it too far up we can go ahead and decorate on the top here uh, <clears throat> you can do this as intricately as you want to make it as jam-packed as you want i'm just going to throw down the first few things i see here so just going to throw down a stash box a cooler and just some uh, kegs of uh, nuka shine quickly uh, but pretty much once this is decorated we want to keep raising this up and we're going to keep going back inside the van to just test how high it should be so if i go back in here you can see it's not high enough now we pretty much want those decorations just touching the roof there we go that almost looks good except it's a little bit too high that's why it's not placing so we need to just lower it a little bit so just over to the pressure plates just one or two taps and now it's the right height with the decorations on top of the cabinets just touching the roof so now we want to line this up and then go underneath like that and check it straight mine was a little bit skew so you might have to just play with this a little bit to get it perfectly straight uh, and there we go once you're happy with it that's pretty straight straight um, once you're happy with it that's fine now what we're going to do is bring this back in so go grab this triple stack of uh, counters and i like this because it just sort of divides the start of the living area of the van from the um, from the driving area so we're just going to put this in here and now once again as close to the fusion core charger or whatever you have there as possible and as close to the back wall as possible and now you'll see it looks like the cabinets are merging into it and it looks like a fixture which is what you would have in a van like this so that looks pretty good um now we we we, we need some on the other side as well so once again um what, what i'm going to do is just depending on depending on what rugs you guys have you can just choose which one you want to use i'm just going to use this default gray one because i want this to look scrappy anyway if you want to try and merge grognak rugs together and get it looking neat you can but i'm just going to use this because i want it to look nice and scrappy anyway so now we're going to go back to these bar counters you could use stash boxes for this you could get creative with this do some crazy stuff you know i just like the way the bar counters work and now we just want to line it up so we're going to put it as close to that cabinet as sort of possible and just picture what it's going to look like in the air and then drop it down and just place it there so sort of just touching the cabinet is fine try get it as straight as possible and then just place one down over there um it's not going to snap i wish it would uh i don't have some fancy trick or explanation for why it doesn't snap i don't know i'm sure one of you know but that's not the end of the world we're just going to place it manually so just take it outside and then line another one up and then another one after that it doesn't have to be perfect but you can get them pretty straight uh, doing it manually so we're going to put two more so that we have three normal sized ones in total like that and then we're going to just choose one of these small ones just for the end here, which is not going to snap so once again we're just going to line it up manually and just snap it manually standing on top of the counters is actually quite a good way to like sort of get it perfectly lined up and once we place that all of those are going to be on this rug so let's just grab this rug and same thing we're going to go boost these into the air so exact same thing as before we're going to boost them into the air we're going to keep going back into the van and checking the height that we want it 
uh, going uh, perpendicular like that to the other one. So there we go. Um, that looks pretty good. It's just under the roof and now we get it as close to the cabinets as possible and then we're just going to place it down. So as close to the left as you can and as close to the cabinets as possible is what you're going for here. And once you've placed it, you just want to check that it's straight. You can see it's skewed there because it's not in line with the roof. And luckily, the roof has lines on it. So you can just move that around a bit and just compensate uh, for the angle. And, and, and you can keep testing it. There you can see now it's pretty much in line with the roof lines. So you can use that little gap to check. So that's fine. So that looks pretty good. And now you can see this whole piece looks like a fixture within the van. Going from the counters along the cabinets and down the triple stack of, of bar counters. And that looks pretty good so we're going to leave that at that and now we're going to start with our first workbench so once again i'm going to try keep it like as simple as possible you can go wild with this so i'm just going to put down that normal stash cabinet and then i'm going to use a stash box in in this case this radar one to just give this some cool texture so i'm just going to place that overlapping slightly there and the front of the stash box on the opposite side of the cabinet so the drawers are not going to show the drawers are going to be at the back which is what i mean pretty much then I'm just going to put another one down, just make sure it's relatively straight and whatnot. Um, and then once you've got both on and you're happy with that, we're just going to merge this down. And this is just to create like a cool texture, um, which is going to be the base for the workbenches. So merge that down until your stash boxes are pretty much flush with the bottom of the cabinets. And then you're left with something like this. And that's what we want pretty much. Now, same thing as before, the trusty old spike trap. We're going to get this out. We're going to put this uh, cabinet on, on the edge of the spike trap. These spike traps, you can do above ground because at the end of the day, you're not going to see any of them. But there is a problem that comes in with doing that, and I'll show you later. But anyway, make sure you leave a little bit of the spike trap sticking out there and make sure it is on the left of this um, cabinet stash that we just created. And you need a little bit sticking out the front there so that we can still select it once it's in there because it's quite a tight angle. You can see I've just destroyed the wall at the back and then I've angled that top roof and destroyed it. And I'll show you why now. So once we get this, uh, this done like this, we're just going to bring it in with the spike trap and place it as close to the back as you can and as close to the right and that's why i destroyed the roof because it kind of looked straight to me there when i was putting it down but as you can see when you look at it from the top it's not straight at all so that's the reason i destroyed the roof just so that you can pretty much see um if the angle that you're trying to place this is working out or not uh so now we're just going to replace it and then move it as far back as we can and try to compensate for that skew angle. And now I'll go back up and check again and then, you know, that looks a lot better. That's pretty much straight. So, yeah, that's cool. And you can just leave that broken for now and then go ahead and activate that spike trap so that the whole stash then we just made disappears. And now I'll put another spike trap down and then, uh, you, and then we're going to go ahead and put the Tinker's Workbench on this spike trap. But we're going to flip this around. So we don't want this to be on the left like it is on the cabinets. We want this, the head of this spike trap, the little part that sticks out there to be on the right of this Tinker's Workbench. Once again, just leave a little bit sticking out there so that you can easily select it like so. Take it over to the, um, the pressure plates and then just merge it flush with the spike trap like we have with everything else. Now we can go ahead and select this once it's nice and flush and go in here and what we're going to do is just line it up with this other spike trap which is what i originally thought i needed to do but you'll see you actually want to put it as far back as possible so you actually want to move that quite a bit further back so it's not in line it's sort of halfway like that like i did there but then i came forward a bit more uh you'll see when i when i fixed it all i realized that it needs to actually be a bit further back so that's fine i'll show you all what i mean just now once again, you can use the top, just make sure it's straight. That looks okay. So that's cool. So we're just going to destroy this now. It does need to be a bit further back, but I do correct that just now. And then what we're going to do is we're going to add in a, a chemistry workbench here. So just the same thing, another spike trap. And now we want this to sort of not be on the far left, but just a, a little bit like a third of the way inwards like that. So that's the right positioning with the bulky part of the chemistry workbench being on the right. So that's the correct orientation. Merge it down flash and now we're going to put it in the middle just sort of as close to the spark trap on the left. That's for the cabinets as we can. Now you, you can see once again I'm placing that spark trap in line with the cabinet spark trap and that's incorrect. Um, 
when I fixed it all, I didn't get the correct texture because it was too close. So I'll show you now what I did to fix that. I'm just gonna fix this, this wall at the back and then fix this wall as well. Um, our door is just replaced with a basic door at the back there for now so we can work. And then yeah, so this is what I meant. So we actually wanna place that spike trap is about there. So towards like about halfway of halfway back compared to the spike trap on the left. So when you fix them all, it looks like this. And this gives you the texture from the uh, workbench we made mixed in with the texture of the actual workbenches and i think that looks great so <clears throat> pretty much your cabinet spike trap you want to place there where it is and then the one for the chemistry bench and the uh, tinker's workbench just make sure they're about halfway back in comparison let me just destroy all this so you can see again so there we go you can see where they are in relation to the spike trap on the left and that looks pretty good um you can merge other stuff in there it's all just going to snap through um and what we're going to do now is just put in some power quickly so i'm going to destroy everything again using the spike traps and then take this little jenny here and this little jenny here and then i'm just going to daisy two these two together and then add a basic switch this is the most basic quick two minute power system i could do guys uh i'm sure you can do something a lot more intricate but um, this is just the quickest one I could think of because we you could put this up by the dash So that it's sort of like the ignition to turn the van on and off I'm just doing this quickly and but this will power the whole van up and down So I'm just gonna put that switch there then attach it with that wire like that just to one of the Jennies And now we're gonna go up top and I'm just gonna fix this roof that we were that we broke to line stuff up And I'm just gonna make it a flat roof by just replacing it and what we actually want to do is use the base roof that came with the game so just this tin one here and once we're done with that we're going to go over to this power connector that goes through the roof like this and just face it this way and it's just so that we can run the power along the top of the roof like this so we're just going to place that there and then um head over to the longest uh, connector that you can, the conduit, and attach that, then replace this roof back to the uh, base game tin roof as well. And let's just put one more conduit just to make sure the power gets all the way to the front of the van and definitely powers up the whole van when you switch it on and off using that switch. So we're just gonna go and use this basic connector to extend the power all the way to the front. And then once, once that's all set up, the jennies are there, the switch is there, um, and we're just going to attach it to that little connector we put through the roof. I forgot to replace the roofs now, back to the steel that I want to use, but I will do that later. And remember when you're fixing these, always fix the ones at the back for the workbenches first, and then the slightly forward one for the cabinet afterwards, otherwise you're not going to be able to reach them. So now that looks pretty cool, there's our jennies uh, coming out, uh, coming uh, intersecting with all the workbenches, and if we replace this with a crazy door, like this alien door, it looks pretty awesome I think. I really like how that looks. That looks great. We've got all our power in there, already two workbenches, and it looks really cool from the front here, especially with the light that that door gives up and whatnot. So you can see the steering wheel's on there, which is that light. Turn the power off, and the steering wheel goes off. I haven't added the lighting yet. I'll do that at the end. So I will show you again then what I mean. But pretty much that switch is just going to turn the whole van on and off. Okay, remember once you've done all this, just test that all your stations work. That's cool, they all look good, so that looks good. Now, one last little thing I wanna show you. This is why I recommend using the spike traps underground if you really want a good looking van. And it's a mission using them underground the way we did in the first tutorial, because you have to line up these workbenches. But here's what I'm saying. So say we wanna put this pillar in on the left here, to sort of close off this uh, this fixture we've done of counters and, um, and uh, cabinets. We can't we can't put it in there because that spike trap is destroyed so we can't put this this pillar close enough um, because it's it gives that error that you can't place it on an object in disrepair and so i did find a little workaround but it's not ideal and if if we had our spike traps underground this wouldn't be a problem so a little workaround you can fix all the spike traps so that your workbenches are there then flame throw all your workbenches but that does not break the spike traps so your workbench is now flamethrowed, spike traps are still fixed, and that's going to allow you to place it there, but it is going to be floating on top of the spike trap, and then there's no way around that. So it's going to look a little bit funny, it merges in there perfectly, so that's all good, but if you had that spike trap underground, and you had your benches floating above, then you could place that pillar perfectly, and it wouldn't be a problem. 
anyway that's it for now guys thanks for tuning in this week um please tune in again next week if you enjoyed it i'm going to upload the next one in a few days time and please tune in and see how we finish building this fan as that will be the final one um after that i'm just gonna do the little tutorial on how to do the trailer the armor trailer which has all your armor workbenches but we are going to finish the inside of this fan in a few days time so if you enjoyed it please tune in and thanks very much for watching cheers